Welcome back. You're with us on Trading Hour. Now we're looking at an issue which uh, seems uh, very technical and perhaps minor, but is it uh, you know potentially something big that the market will have to, have to grapple with when it comes to foreign portfolio investors? Now, uh, uh, depository participants as well as uh, custodian banks have come out with new SOPs, standard operating procedures, which will govern whether FPIs should get exemption from enhanced uh, disclosure requirements that kicked in from April of 2023. And this happened in the midst of the whole Adani saga when SEBI had tightened disclosure norms and uh, it had made more granular disclosures mandatory if two conditions were being met by any particular FPI. Whether uh, the first of that condition was if that FPI uh, is owning more than 50% or more than 50% of, of its assets are going in one single Indian company. And the second condition was if the FPI's aggregate investments in the Indian capital market are in excess of 25,000 crore rupees. So if you know, those conditions were being met, you had to comply with granular disclosures unless you, you, know, you enjoyed exemptions on certain basis. Now that criteria for exemptions has been tightened. So just very, very quickly, what is the new criteria? Uh, now, in a very, very clearly laid out uh, sort of uh, terminology, uh, the new norms say uh, or seem to suggest that for pooled investment vehicles, how to determine whether these are widely pooled investment vehicles or not, uh, the contributors to that FPI, to that fund, they must enjoy equal rights, paripasu rights. Uh, then there should be no segregated portfolios maintained. I mean, a different class of investors should not get different rights and different portfolios. Uh, and uh, then the investors themselves, the contributors to that fund, they should not be owning the fund and operating that fund. There should be a distinction between the contributions coming in from contributors and the management of that FPI structure or, the, or that FPI fund. So these are some of the new, uh, very clear distinctions that have come out. The question is, is this going to impact the market in any way whatsoever? We have uh, Puneet Shah of Dhruva Advisors joining in. Puneet, thanks for joining in. Technical issue, your first thoughts. Uh, I think it's a very interesting development. Uh, the circular or the SOP always uh, existed. Uh, it came in uh, last year, as you mentioned, uh, should be. Um, and however, it was subjective. Uh, it was depending on uh, DDPs. It was depending on custodians to decide uh, which of the FPIs uh, would be exempted from the disclosure norms. Um, and I think there was a need to tighten some of these criteria and make it more objective. So what the new SOPs, I think, has been agreed by the custodians or DDPs along in consultation with SEBI is that let's make this criteria more objective and uh, very specific as to which are the FPIs which would be exempt uh, from the disclosure norms. And uh, as you rightly mentioned, the criteria are, um, uh, they, they have to be regulated in the uh, home jurisdiction by the appropriate regulator. The, the unit holders have to have paripasu rights. I think that is something which is new and uh, very apt because if the particular class of investors, if they have a disproportionate rights or disproportionate economic interest, in that case, they are able to control the downstream investments. But here, one of the requirement, the key requirement is that the contributors to the fund, they enjoy paripasu rights. Nobody has any higher rights. No one has any lower rights. That is number one. And number two, the investors in the fund or FPI do not control the ultimate investments being made by the FPI. They do not control the investment manager, which is controlling the FPI. These two, as I can see, are the key additional criteria which help uh, DDPs and custodians to appropriately monitor the FPIs, their independence, and uh, providing them the exemption from the granular disclosure norms. We need to try and sort of simplify this even further. Can this impact a lot of FPIs? I mean, uh, the big FPI structures that are investing in the Indian market, uh, could they be in breach of these conditions, which is giving all investors equal status, paripasu status, uh, not having any kind of segregated portfolios and there being a clear separation between the contributors into that FPI fund and the manager of that FPI fund. Could there be a breach in which case exemption won't be given? That's correct. Uh, that's correct. So I think the new criteria look to me quite objective, quite specific 
and to my mind i think it would be very difficult for the fpis or the managers or the contributors to breach this criteria uh, because this has to be governed by the regulator home regulator or the constitution document uh, of that jurisdiction and once it is provided in those documents then the fpis will have to follow uh, this uh, these norms and uh, therefore in, if they breach these norms then clearly they will not be exempted and uh, and they have been given 3 months of uh, time frame up to august uh, 24 uh, to to comply uh, with these uh, regulations new regulations or new sop if they do not comply with these new regulations then uh, clearly they have one more month to wind down their position or slightly like liquidate the position uh, so these are quite quite stricter norms in that sense so that is number one also to add there is uh, an extra d as i can see in the regulation uh, which was quite a exhaustive list earlier an extra d talks about the uh, jurisdictions uh, the examples of jurisdiction they have given from where these fpis could invest in india and they could be subject to this exemption from the disclosure norms uh, that list seems to be substantially truncated uh, the new list only contains jurisdiction such as usa or australia it doesn't contain the uh, uh, very popular jurisdictions such as mauritius or singapore or luxembourg for for that matter not sure whether this is intended or uh, this is just an illustrative list but some of these pooled vehicles in uh, some of these jurisdictions such as mauritius or singapore they do have variable capital or variable class of shares with the issue uh, to the uh, investors and uh, and uh, now that variable class of shares uh, is now prohibited they have to be pari passu uh, and therefore uh, is it intended that these jurisdictions are no longer mentioned in the annexure or uh, is it uh, just an illustrative list that needs to be clarified but overall the, there seems to be uh, quite a Uh, tightening of the norms, uh, making it quite objective, uh, and therefore, and therefore, to my mind, uh, it would be it would be quite uh, quite important for the FPIs and the EDPs to uh, follow these norms going forward. Basis. Hmm. Uh, so you know, in your assessment, Puneet, what is going to be the market impact? You've explained various aspects of it. but will this be disruptive to your mind um we we'll have to we we'll have to wait and watch i'm just going through the uh, conditions again um clearly it would depend it's a very case specific thing um we have seen several fpis who have a uh, different class of units which are being issued uh, uh, to the different investors who have different economic interest who have different controlling rights uh, there are disproportionate returns being paid uh, to the investors uh, there could be segregated portfolio uh, for several investors as well so yes uh, we have seen in our real practice uh, fpis with differential rights uh, given to the investors given to the contributors and those fpis going forward will not qualify of course uh, they have to also meet overall condition of the more than 50% of the aum in india 25000 crore limit all those limits also have to be satisfied to be uh, to to be to fall uh, within this sops but if they qualify for those uh, criteria and uh, they do not have this uh, condition then i think it could be it could be Uh, to my mind disruptive for the market because numbers involved would be pretty large because it applies so only Pune, to certain so pune pune that is pune that is the big biggest question right and uh, the thing is when these enhanced disclosure norms were released last year in august last year uh, there was this big hue and cry about whether there will be a lot of market disruption but thanks to the exemptions it wasn't a big market event because a lot of the structures i guess got the exemption do you feel that now in this new form with these new exemptions there could be a risk of disruption um yes i was just comparing uh, the exemption norms 
which were issued last year, August 23, vis-a-vis -vis the disclosure norms today. Uh, and I do see significant uh, tightening of the disclosure or other exemption norms. Uh, uh, earlier, a lot of subjectivity given to DDPs uh, and the custodians, even though there was a guiding criteria which was already given to say that uh, common portfolios for all the investors. That was the uh, no segregation. That was a guiding principle last year. Today, that guiding principle continues. Plus, you have additional criteria, especially on this paripasu rights in the entity, uh, which I would say is a very significant uh, amendment, very significant uh, measure uh, with the SEBI and custodians have taken. And um, to my mind, it could have a significant impact. Okay, understood. Uh, thanks very much, Puneet. I think we'll uh, have some more discussions on this to figure out how it plays out. The cutoff now date is the 20th of August, by which either you have to comply with these new rules or disclose your beneficial owners or start winding down. Got it. Thank you very much for uh, taking us through this uh, new development with respect to FPI disclosure norms in the country. And with that, we're coming down to the end of uh, this edition of uh, Trading Hour as well. And Rima, I mean, as we are closing down, not only is the Nifty cooled off, but the mid-cap market, now that's looking at a bit of a sell-off. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the mid-cap index is down close to about 0.7%. The small cap index, too, has a cut of about 0.6%. And look at the advanced decline ratio. It was 2 is to 3, and now it's 1 is to 2. The gap between the two has widened. But with that, we're going to wind down on Trading Hour from the entire team. Thank you for watching.